So we have an interview with Lucky and Chris from Oki Systems. Now I've covered uh, the launch uh, that Chris announced last week of uh, Oki along with the SMS rerouting hack that we saw, uh, which generated a ton of press. So this is a chance to delve into a little bit more detail about uh, what Oki Systems is getting up to. So Chris, Lucky, thank you so much for uh, taking part. Please introduce Oki Monitor, please. Right, but thanks for having us on here. Um, Oki Systems is more of a uh, collaborated, a, uh, collaborated a, a security group that we're bringing new products out of to solve problems that just haven't been solved yet. Gotcha. Um, so. Understood. So uh, how are you achieving this monitoring of uh, people's uh, SMS accounts? Well, there's a couple of ways that we're doing this and we're making it more advanced. So one, we wanted to disclose the problem, but we didn't want to disclose it um, without having a solution that individuals can like at least monitor their own services and also not charge them for that. At the same time, um, we're letting a thousand flowers blossom, so to say, um, and creating products around this where we can generate revenue in different ways that can solve the problem on the other side of it. Um, Understood. Understood. I mean, initially this came to buy because like one of my numbers got hijacked unintentionally and it went, it was gone for three days. I didn't know because I have iMessage. Yep. Meanwhile, like, you know, there's like law enforcement I was communicating with on some cases we were working on and all their messages went somewhere else and I had no idea. And that was a problem. Yep. And so, you know, a response. I mean, prior to our disclosure, you could have taken anyone's number. Um, it doesn't matter if they're law enforcement, if they're like in the government or, 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 or anyone, they could pretty much take anyone's number. And so one of the kind of outcomes from the disclosure was we wanted to make sure we worked with everyone that we possibly could to give forewarning beforehand. Yeah. And also like have that solution available for individuals to use at no cost to them. And I really mean that, like we're not using their data for anything at all. Yeah. I don't care about that. Yeah. Um, but tr traditionally, if you're not paying for something, you're the product. You know, but that's not exactly. that's not how we're yeah that's not how we're that's not how we are operating. Understood. No, nope, that's clear. Now, of course, sim swap has been widely reported, but this is a new one. This sim rewriting. Is there any more information you can share around how it works? Because you know, this one took me by surprise. Well, you know, one thing that we're adding to our monitor service is the ability to monitor like sims for different product sets uh, that are that are to come to market. Mm -hmm. um, but if you sim swap someone, like you're, you're essentially taking their like voice and and their and their messages, yeah. like you're taking their their phone. Yeah, you're taking like, their this, whole cell service. Yeah, yeah. yeah Where like this issue, like like prior to disclosure, like you could take someone's cell phone and they don't know, and now you're like getting their one-time passcodes, are able to access online accounts that are asking you to add your cell phone as a um, trusted device. And then like put it back, and like the, the victim would never know. Yeah. Um, but we'll get to the update on like what has happened since then. But okay. um, th cool. that's kind of the difference between these, these two kind of things. And like one thing we wanted to make sure, like like we we do provide an SMS service um, through different through 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 a different company, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to use any of our like actual like access or contracts we have to violate anything. We didn't want to use anything that we had to like reproduce this and demo it. And so. When that other company, I don't even remember their name. I, I feel horrible that they got Sakari. Now so much. <laughs> yeah. Like we didn't even know who they were. Like that, that's not a, that's not an insult or anything. I just was never looking. We, yeah. we found yeah. them within like two minutes of looking. So it was like, um, yeah, when we, when we first, uh, out. yeah, when we first went to vice, we had, uh, permission from another provider to demo this. Mm -hmm. And uh, right before we went to demo, they revoked our permission. So, okay. uh, so we were like, "All right, well, we'll just, you know, we'll just find someone else. I'm sure someone else has a text enablement or something, because yeah. we, we, we've seen it all the time about, you know, like ZipWhip as a text enable your business landline or whatever. So, exactly. like, oh, we could probably find someone that does this. And uh, Sakari unfortunately had a Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, yeah. had really good SEO SEO on Google. Got so <laughs> they they came up on the first page and let us sign up for a demo account. 
with basically nothing and um gotcha and uh yeah we we went to go text enable a number and that like that was that option wasn't available so like i emailed support and i'm like hey what's the deal with this and they're like well you gotta you have to go to the paid version and i'm like oh okay well then i'll throw 16 dollars at it <laughs> <laughs> and then uh yeah we demoed with vice and like you know before vice could even ask anything we had already started intercepting their text so <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like but like keep in mind we have a mission to do all this we did have like legitimate loas and stuff yeah but it's a, it was a matter of like those LOAs submitted like could have been anything and 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 and, and that and that company did do a great job of responding to the issue yes. before anyone else yeah and so yep. no, i have a lot of respect for them they, yep. they they also refunded my 16 dollars for some reason i think they may have thought i was fraudulent but <laughs> i was like uh all right so i guess i demoed that for free <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So uh, just stepping back, why aren't the checks and balances around this? I mean, why isn't this like regulated given the critical importance of uh, SMS? Well, I mean, it's kind of a problem like caller ID. Um, mm. It's just it's just like normal to the nature of the business, the way things are. Okay. And so they're trying to do this chicken and stir thing with caller ID. Yeah. And we've always broken like broken or brought to light the vulnerabilities of people trying to provide a caller ID, a caller ID authentication service. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of wait until they could address that because I'm pretty sure we can address that. But it's just a normal, it's just a normal function of business of like moving your SMS. It's just, but it's also a separate route than like what your voice is. Exactly. Yeah. So well, the, I, his question was, why isn't it regulated? And um, that comes down to some FCC policy decisions that basically the FCC has stated that SMS text messaging is an information service and not doesn't fall under Title II. So that's not always been the case, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it has been the case recently. And that's kind of what opened the door for, uh, for net number to allow this type of SMS routing. Gotcha, gotcha. As okay. a third party, they're basically a third party, uh, you know, database that says, hey, if you want to route your text to this number, route it here. And then they allow anyone to update their database was kind of what the issue is. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, and like, you know, I don't take the position of like supporting regulation or not supporting regulation. I think the market can fix itself. Okay. That's just things that are brought to light in a responsible way, which we've Understood. seen a good response to this since, since, our, since our disclosure. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. No, but that, that's clear. I mean, it is. It's how the uh, industry uh, responds. So are other, so, I mean, the U.S. is a bit of a special case because of the CTIA and the sort of FCC sort of taking, you know, so you've got two heads there, um, you know, one an industry body, one the actual regulator. When we look at other markets, like in Europe, you know, the regulator controls both the voice and the messaging. Is, you know, the SMS rewriting we've seen here in North America, is that possible? In other markets it is possible in other markets and countries um however net number only allows it in country code plus one area region okay. um but that <laughs> you're 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 focusing on on a that question focuses on a on a good thing though because not only was this able to be done in the u.s uh, we also tested it in Barbados, oh, okay. which happens to be in country code one, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and Barbados is an independent sovereign nation. So like they're not FCC regulated. They, you know, yeah. <laughs> they have their own telecom regulation authority. Exactly. Um, exactly. And then, you know, and then other countries within plus one were also vulnerable to this, like Canada, yep. um, you know, and you know, Canada has its own regulation, obviously, CRTC, yep. I think it is. Um, gotcha. And yeah, and, and other and other Caribbean islands as well. So, I mean, it's not just a US centric thing per se, because there are other countries involved in this region where net number offers a uh, routing for SMS. That's clear. Yeah, and it's kind of like a double edged sword to like mm -hmm. add to that where it's like, it's like, country like international like markets i would say is kind of behind mm -hmm. in a sense because there's not that kind of database available um to accomplish what that number is accomplished in the u.s really 
Yeah. Um, for people to be able to like enable their own numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. At the same time, like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. How how do you secure it? Right. Is, uh, is is the big question because so far net number has mitigated this by, uh, by not allowing certain wireless carriers to be taken within the U S but, other non-wireless numbers are still vulnerable so some carriers are more equal than others when it comes to who they allow to be taken over and not interesting i mean as a consequence like we still have more testing to do but as a consequence like their fix wasn't really a fix a temporary thing which i applaud them for mm-hmm. but it's a temporary thing that ended up breaking like lmp and in in, in in sense yeah that's true that's true yeah absolutely so i what you Looking at next steps, because I mean, this is a good example of you know the risks you know that are out there in protecting you know a phone service um, you know that consumers can't possibly know about. So, what steps do you think regulators or you know sort of the mobile carriers should be taking to protect their customers from this? Because I mean, you know, Chris, you highlighted that your number basically got rerouted because you know you were feeling a bit lonely because you were sending texts but you weren't receiving any texts from people responding well actually like i was using iMessage with most of my contacts i never okay. even knew gotcha like i didn't i didn't know because iMessage like totally was independent of sms yeah it was but, just that mean, one particular party that wasn't using iMessage and he didn't uh, know why yeah he didn't know why his text you know why he wasn't getting texted back from that party Oh, that's interesting. And this yeah. was a total, like, total, like, um, not, it was nothing malicious that was done at all to me. It was, it was a matter, I never removed it from the portal that I had ported the number out from to myself. Okay. And so it had gotten, it had gotten, like, given away or something in some bash that should oh, never happen. Yeah, okay. the, the VoIP carrier it was with, uh, ended up, like, rerouting it or something. So, oh, gotcha. yeah, they weren't, <laughs> the texts weren't coming to his cell service after he had ported it out. Gotcha. I understand now. Oh, that that's clear. So I understand how the situation rises. But then, that, of course, that led you into, you know, uh, realizing that it was possible, and then implementing it basically, uh, yeah, showing the weakness that was with net number. But uh, you know, as you've indicated, they have put a fix in place pretty quickly. Well, it's not really a fix. It's something that just stopped everything when it came to mobile until they can have a fix. Because okay. I mean. Honestly, I think the fix is probably going to be within the next like three to four years in a blockchain type of solution that's very simplified to handle all these different services in a yep. way that's like um, with check and balances on, on their own. Um, I, I know what we're doing now is like, I know all these major companies, um, all these major companies that have two-factor authentication built in aren't going to rip it out. They can't. No. And I also know like they're not going to redevelop something to like to replace it with. Yeah. Because um, that's like the same amount of work type of thing. Yeah. And so yeah. they're kind of like stuck in this limbo state, whereas like the mobile phones are like stuck in a like complete state of not doing anything. Yeah. And that was our other angle of this that kind of like grew out of this. Like some people reached out to us and we kind of changed our model from this personal monitoring service to be able to provide two factor authentication in a new way on the other side of it. Uh-huh. So what we're doing now is being able to provide two-factor authentication service with limited code base changes to the, to the to our actual customer, so they can provide the service to their end user in a more secure manner. And like how we're doing that is, um, when they submit, when the end user submits their number to be a trusted device, yep. we're taking a snapshot of all these different carrier settings, oh. uh, and then also like asking them, and additionally for secondary notification points in the event that they're device becomes no longer trusted. Gotcha. So then in the future, when any, any one-time passcodes are, are, are sent out, before they're sent out, we check against the profile that we've built if, if the device has still been trusted or not. And if it's not, then we contact the secondary endpoints as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as another measure. However, like a little juicy bit of info right here that no one knows yet, um, we're adding in the capability of changing out your primary delivery method. So the end user doesn't have to use SMS to receive exactly. one-time passcodes. They could, yep. they, could, they could elect to use like iMessage or some other service like Keybase or Signal, et cetera, yep. um, instead. Exactly. And we're building that in in a way where it's like, 
very like limited code base changes for our customers that we're going to be dealing with to replace that two-factor on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the, the time of life, I mean, two-factor has been depreciated by N IST, but it's just there, it's simple, it works because of SMS ubiquity. But there are a range of other, op, you know, technologies and services you can get today where you can use information around, you know, that link between the device and the network so that uh, you, know, you don't even need to do two-factor authentication to know that it's a, uh, you know, it is Alan that's uh, on the phone. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, you know, T TeleSign has something, Prove, there's, you know, a number of providers that give that sort of score rating. And of course, I mean, back to the point you raised earlier, Chris, with um, blockchain. Uh, I know quite a few companies that are looking at the application of blockchain exactly in this space. And of course, you know, linking it to self-sovereign identity so you know, potentially even the users could be empowered in this rather than it centralized. I mean, that's exactly what. Sorry, that's exactly what we're working on with our current product offerings in the in the in the works. Okay. It's like resolve the two-factor authentication method issue while like not creating a lot of new work for the customers that implement it and replace it. Gotcha. So the user experience is the same. Yeah. Like, I know my mom's not going to use Authy. My mom's not going to use like Google uh, Google Auth. No. Um, while those apps make sense, my mom's not going to use it. And so yeah. um, we're working to like replace it without people noticing that it's replaced in essence. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand. Uh, it's trying to make the user experience as transparent as possible. So it's, you know, I, I said it on the CX Tech newsletter, it's almost like perversely adding security to make the user experience better. Which let's face it, normally when you add security, it makes the user experience a damn sight worse. Exactly. Great. So I, I'm, you know, I'll be tracking what you're doing. So please keep me updated. I'm hoping for a TAD Summit Amir Americas in November, we'll get uh, an update on all your escapades as I'm sure, well, I know both of you are extremely busy given all the work this has triggered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, Lucky and I have probably been working together on projects since like, I don't know, over 15 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like working with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great again lucky chris again, thank you so much for uh, taking the time this was excellent thank you so much yep thank you